and he's done it. Rookie four still keeps the spark alive. Robert, this right here is a moxie by Fabiano. Fasten your seatbelts for absolute chess history. It's nearly 2 a.m. here in the UK, but worth staying up for this moment in chess history. Now, going into the final round of the chess candidates, we had Fabi, Hikaru, and Jan all on eight points, and the pairings on screen, as you can see here, were insane. What would happen? Well, we're diving in on the Fabi versus Jan Nepomniak game and then I'll also reveal the result of Hikaru versus Gukesh at the end. Let's dive in. Fabi opens with pawn d4. We get knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3. We head down a queen's gambit declined, exchange variation, bishop g5 and now things sharpen up with bishop to b4 here. We get e3 on the board h6 and we had Cagnus Marlson in the studio giving some thoughts. He mentioned you can exchange bishop for knight here. Go queen b3. Boring but obviously not played. Fabi drops back. Both these players want to win and it's why Jan is playing so aggressively with Gary the g-pawn. Now the bishop drops and knight e4. This is the point. Huge pressure on c3. So queen c2 covers and h5. Let's lob Harry down the board for good measure. Look at them connected. H4 coming to a theatre near you soon. So F3 played to give some space. We see a chop here. Pawn recaptures an immediate imbalance. Black with the two Bs, white with the fluid pawn structure, looking for e4 soon. So bishop e6 from Yan. He turns it into a big pawn. Bishop d3, and now prawn to c ships just solidifies the position there. And Fabi castles queenside. What a battle we've got on our hands out of the opening. Knight d7, and I love this response. Pawn f4, threatening f5, trapping the big pawn. So bishop g4 played, and now the all-seeing silicon overlord wants bishop e2, and the bishops get chopped, and the knight develops, and you get this quick e4 gambit followed by d5. Deep stuff. But knight f3 played, the natural move. Pressures g5 somewhat, and now Jan makes a series of two bad moves. Awful stuff out the opening here. He should immediately take, liquidate this G pawn, which is loose, but he starts with queen to e7, and it allows Fabi to thrust forward in the center immediately with pawn e4. Jan should take that one, but he doesn't. He takes on c3. Awful move, activating the queen here. There's problems with his king safety now. We're going to see that unfold. We see takes on f3. That knight threatening to be a monster. Take on g5, for example. And now pawn recaptures. Takes on e4 played. And Fabi has this pleasant choice. Do you set up the massive center here? Connect the trio of dragons or take with the bishop, which was selected. And the stronger move, because d5 on the cards. Now we see takes on f4 from Jan, going for dynamic counterplay, and g4 in response. Not taking, doubling the pawns, but instead using the pressure here, the rook is unprotected. So what does Jan do? Well, he castles queenside. You know, h4 looking really natural, but then there's king b1, castles queenside, d5 comes anyway. They're similar crossover lines. We see it played out in this order now. The king getting ripped open. What do you do here? Queen c5 an option. King b8. There's many different lines, but Yan goes for h4. Imprecision after imprecision. The evaluation bar rising on the left here. Fabi takes on c6, and here the point revealed right. Not to recapture. Rip open your king, but knight c5 played. We get check. 
flicked in. King goes to b8, and now Yan is just imploding here. He plays the terrible move after Fabi goes king b1 of pawn to b6, solidifying his knight, yes, but creating these huge light squared weaknesses. And if we jump back one move, why didn't Fabi take here? Why did he go king b1? Will you actually help black unravel somewhat? Moves like rook takes on d1 can be played, followed by queen e3 check, getting the ladies off the board. So we come back. This was played out, but now Fabi gets the amazing invasion going with rook to d7. And you can't capture with the knight. Beautiful tactics. You get c7 check. Forks, king, and rook. This is a sample line, and white is doing amazing with this checkmating attack on the way. Pawn dropping soon. It's all game over. So we come back here. We see rook takes on d7 instead. Pawn recaptures, rook d8 coming in front of that monster d pawn here, but Fabi centralizes. Yes, the pawn drops, played by Yan, but now the pressure intensifies on the d file, the angle of attack switched, and this one is on tap at any moment. And now Yan sets a trap with queen c5, but of course, Fabi does not fall for it. Here's the point if you take the queen, Obviously knight can't take or rook drops with check. You come beyond the, the h pawn here. And if you go pawn takes on c5, again, looks like you're winning a clean piece, but there's a problem. The h pawn runs and the f pawn blocks the retreat route. You can't actually get back. Stop that one promoting. So we come back here. Fabi therefore takes with check. Best move, the queen blocks. Now this one slides back to d2, still a pin down the d file here as we can see. h3 on the board, bishop e4, pawn a5, and we really see the bind that Yan is in. The evaluation is rising, it's plus five for Fabiano Caruana, but so many twists and turns in this game, you would not believe. This queen centralizes, hits two points, mate is threatened. So king a7 played, the rook now covers the square, but the f pawn drops, two connected passes. This is ominous. Pawn h2 played, we're coming up to the time control. This is move 33. There are 40 moves to be made until the players get time back, plus 30 seconds back per move. Uh, queen h7 now played, coming behind the pawn here. King b8 back, Yan shuffling away. Pawn a3, nice prophylaxis. Queen e5 centralizes and queen h6. Filigree precision from Fabiano Caruana behind the h pawn, but pressuring b6 and the knight. Many tactics in the air, so the queen has to come back, do some defensive work, and g5. Look at this. Rumbling down the board. The writing's on the wall. Rook g8 now played. Rook h1. More excellent quality control chess. Knight c5 hits the bishop, and now... Fabi, on move 38, he just blinks for the first time in time pressure. It's his Achilles heel. What should he do here? Top engine move is bishop c2. You just dominate that knight. You cover the king. You cover all the light squares, right? You keep a lovely laser beam in this direction, supporting the advance of the pawns, and the heavy pieces got everything well controlled. Wonderful position. But Fabi plays bishop to h7 instead. Sure, he hits the rook, but he's overlooked a tactic. Can you find the best move for black here to turn the tables and come storming back into this game? Jan, of course, finds it. He takes the pawn on g5, and it distracts the queen from the defense of the bishop, which falls with check as well. And the real key kicker here is that in combination with the knight and the pawn, there are now huge perpetual ideas on these light squares. So Fabi goes king a1 not stepping onto a light square. The engine preferred king a2 here, but we are not going to go deep. The lines are nuts. 
Watch back the live stream if you want to know all of the details. But okay, these players are human. They can't step through every precision on low time. Knight b3 check on the cards. We get a check first from Fabi though. King a7, King a2, and Pawn a4. Shutting the trap on those light squares. Fabi now got such a difficult task. He's trying to sort of sidestep those landmines, right? Hard to think right now of the, <laughs> the words I'm trying to find. It's two in the morning. We've got f4 on the board. Great move. And now the engine says king a6, only move to keep black on a level pegging because you come away from a check. But knight b3 played immediately. Very natural, but it allows check. King moves and the queen sliding all the way back to c3. Good defensive work. You cannot exchange and go for that one. So queen g2, obviously Fabi doesn't blunder his rook. He's not that bad of a player. He's a fantastic player, actually. That sounds really horrible. We see check, king b7, and now this is great. This shows his quality, right? Rook to e1. He comes away from the attack. He allows the pawn to queen if Jan wants to do so, but don't do that. Rook e7, and you're getting hunted. Different checkmates on the way, but there is a sample line. So you can't make the queen. Knight c5 blocks the invasion of the queen. Good move. We get queen f1. Again, the exchange offered. Declined. You can't go for it. Check, therefore, landed. King b1. Another check. The king moves. Queen c2. This is where it's so tricky now. Fabi wishing he had a light squared bishop, but not on the board. He starts running the f pawn. And what a game. How much is this hotting up? It's just insane. Knight d3 threatens checkmate. So covered by the rook. Knight c5 back. And now f6. It's two squares away. The red carpet is rolled out. What is Jan going to do here? I mean, any move in this game, right? Pause, think, what would you do? And it gives you a sense of how hard this is for the players to navigate. So a check is played, king a2. But now what? Where's the follow-up? Well, knight d2, Jan goes to Forktown, but hang on, there's a check. This is the point. Then you can escape with the rook. The queen now goes, another check, king a1. It's so tricky. Queen e6 comes back. And apparently, rook d1, rook e1, top moves of the all-seeing computer, the metal engine. But rook c7 check played, the evaluation plummeting, but only temporarily. Watch this. King a6, pawn f7, another check, the king back to b1, queen f5 check, and the computer absolutely craps itself. Come back here, right? Why? Because apparently knight d2 check keeps us in a drawing mechanism. King c2, king a1, and then you check. I mean, the lines are just nuts. We'd be here all day, right? And I have not got all day. I need to get some sleep soon. So queen f5 check was played in the game. King a2 in response. Knight c5 back, and hang on. Fabi invades with the queen. King b5, and the hunt is on. We get a repetition, king back, but wait, stop. Look at the bar, it's plus seven, but only if Fabi finds, test yourself if you like, I'm about to show the move here, only one move wins, it's queen to e8 check. And the point is, when the king goes back to a6, you completely switch up the angle. I mean, this is the amazing geometry of queens, right? They're like the pyramids of Giza, just cutting it up at all angles. And what do you do now? You know, you can block with the knight, but it's no good. Uh, what's the other moves? King a5, you get mated like this. You know, that's how bad it is. And on this line here of knight d3, where are we, sorry, here, knight d3, then you can take the H pawn. This one's still dangerous. You know, the line goes on, but white should be winning. This pawn drops is one of the critical things. But it was missed. No queen E8 check played. Instead this, king A6, and now you can't go for the line. You'll be repeating the position. So rook E7 played, queen F1, threatening to make a baby girl. So we get check. King here, more checks, you know, a whole series, and it's like what to do. 
Do you just keep giving a perpetual? Draw is no good to either player. They need to win. They want to try and catch Gukesh, right? So King A6 played, and now Fabi, to his credit, he just goes for it. This is where he plays the move. Rook to e4. What a move. And he's done it. Rook e4 still keeps the spark alive. Robert, this right here is a moxie by Fabiano. Still keeping the flame burning. And if you now mate the queen, here's the nasty point. It's mate in two. You go check. King here. Rook b4 shuts the trap. Once again, we just see this amazing geometry on the board. So difficult to calculate all this stuff. So Jan takes off the exchange, which is offered, but Fabi doesn't take back immediately. Chucks in the swish and zook, gives the king that check, then picks up the knight, and watch this. Both players are making new queens. This is what we see. Now these ones leave the board. Jan makes his own. We reach this two on one. Is Fabi done yet? No. There is another 30 moves here. Does it head towards a draw? Or do we get some inexplicable blunder? We're about to find out. Fabi starts pressing, right? Pushes with the pawns, covers the king. Now he's trying to make progress. Soon he makes another pawn push, I believe, if I remember correctly. Literally just stopped watching this game. He's shuffling the king. Jan's trying to hold steady, give some checks. He wants to just force a perpetual. Well, he doesn't want to. He wants to win, but that's all he can do at this stage. But draw agreed. We didn't get a pawn push, sorry. The pawns stay steady, but what to do? If Fabi tries to make progress, Jan just keeps checking. It's a dead draw. So it begs the question, what happened in the Hikaru Gukesh game? We'll check out Hikaru's channel if you want an unspoiled result, right? Or a Gotham recap. But the result's now coming. Gukesh drew that game with the black pieces. He therefore finishes on nine points, chasing pack on eight and a half. Are you actually kidding me right now? The 17-year-old from India has just taken down the entire tournament. You got Fabi, Jan, Hikaru, chasing pack, but couldn't catch him. Too many draws earlier on, losses, things like that. Not enough, uh, enough aggressive risk chess, I guess. They just didn't get it done. How has this happened? What incredible play from Domaraju Gukesh, making him the youngest player ever ever to qualify for a world chess championship match he goes on to face ding liren who's really been struggling this young man has never had a better chance of being world champion stupid thing to say because it's his only chance right the guy is 17 but in the course of his lifetime anyway you know if he doesn't win this one he would look back and think wow like that was my moment so okay on we march what an incredible tournament smash subscribe if you enjoyed and i hope to see you again soon cheers